Have you ever wanted to play Elementalist build that deal damage with every single type of elemental damage? In this video I present Elementalist build that using discharge spell on 8 power, 8 endurance and 4 frenzy charges for a total overall of 20 charges. Build exploits new trinity support gem that have elemental penetration for cold, fire and lightning damage and discharge of every element coupled with 100% critical strike chance also gives build shock ignite and most important shatter of frozen enemies and all that coupled with 20 charge discharge have insane area of effect even in single target combination and this build is designed with a ritual leak mechanic in mind and maven arena boss fights uh, yes, this is a really gimmicky build, but actually it works so great with current leak mechanic. Uh, for example, on majority of rituals you just send one on one place in the center and press button every like one or two seconds and clear screen wide areas. On the Maven boss fights you just move around a, quite a bit, but you still deal area of effect in the insane range and deal damage to several bosses at once. Maven fights with 10 bosses are really pleasant to execute and I'm really happy with this build that actually carry me into fully upgraded Atlas. Build definitely is not the fastest single target bosser for encounters like Sirius with only 5 to 10 million shape DPS, but that is actually can be addressed by more expensive items and small adjustments. You can double single target damage by investing more currency into the builds. This is really easily scalable build from rare items with only handful of uniques. And as usual, I have tested everything on lower budget spectrum and all footage was recorded with gear costing total of 500 chaos orbs with level 95 character on second week of the leak. This is not the leak starter build. If you are interested, please check out my Trinity Archmage Elementalist build to have cheap leveling build that can bankroll your adventures. And if you are from the future, please check the video description and pin comment for any changes. And of course, here we go with detailed explanation of the build mechanics. So where are the charges coming from? First build have starting point with Freeling Stormbrand setup. Stormbrand is a really fast spell that can crit a lot of times for one single cast, and it is supported by Anomalous Power Charge on Critical Strike support. With increased Critical Strike support, Stormbrand have 100% green chance and not only give you power charges, but actually stack shock element effect for extra damage. This setup like dense monster packs and can get you 8 instant power charges. If built fighting single target, best utility for this setup is actually a rune binder keystone on passive tree to have the two attached brands on single boss at the same time. Second step is to have power charge conversion into endurance charges when they are spent by discharge. And that is why build use unique walls devotion amulet. Every power charge spent on the build is converted into endurance charge and the side first cut of the map or intentional premature second discharge with zero power charges, you should always have maximum endurance charges that are always replaced by just spent power charges. This however requires a bit of concentration and micro. Do not prematurely discharge your power load, unless you really want that. But I think this type of management is in your manly nature anyway. Third step is actually getting frenzy charges. After testing a lot of weird setups, I ended with simple rare body armor with a redeemer influence modifier of 10% frenzy charge chance on hit. And since build do not need 6 link body armor, it would be a really cheap piece of gear to acquire. I got mine for 25 chaos orbs and definitely spent more currency on self craft 5 link and recoloring that bloody chest. Now with charge generation engine established, let's talk about total number of maximum charges. Any build gets free of each type by default. This build get maximum of 3 extra power charges from passive tree. Also on passive tree build get 1 of each for endurance and frenzy charges. Then on amulet anoint it is sensible to get vigor notable with 1 extra endurance charge. And after these simple steps build already have 6 power, 5 endurance and 4 frenzy charges. But this is not enough. Two dirt cheap combs where unique rings push endurance charges to 7 and build gets really nice life regeneration from each endurance charge. Then to get 7 power charge build use plus 1 power charge for lord influence rare helmet and this helmet type can cost you quite a bit. I got mine for 240 chaos orbs. Just do not try to self craft that modifier, it is really really rare. And finally, we finish build with 8 power and endurance charge from rare eventuality road war stuff base type and the implicit that gives you plus 1 to both charges. 
Eventuality rod base type is relatively common, but since it is more of a melee base type, there are not enough good rolled ones for the build on the trade. That is why I just bought 6 link stuff for one exalted orb and alteration orb crafted it to have plus 2 levels of any element. Since well, discharge just do not care and every element is in the gem tags. Then I wriggled and scoured it until it had sensible modifiers and in the end just benchcrafted spell damage. Really cheap and trash tier craft for one exalt orb and 400 of alteration orbs. If you want to push this single target damage further on this build, it is actually sensible to spend a bit more currency and craft plus 3 levels of gems and get multi craft with crit multi. That way you can get easy extra 1 million shaped DPS or maybe even more. Let's talk 6 links discharge. By default this spell have 2 second cooldown which is a bit steep for current state of the game. For that reason it is really powerful to use second wind support for 1 extra munition on discharge and lowered cooldown. Also that allow build to prematurely do discharge to proc Trinity support full elemental resonance. As you can see in serious footage I first get Trinity support resonance for fire and call from maximum power charge discharge with highest lightning damage. Then I do not wait for power charge build up and immediately discharge 8 endurance charges with highest fire damage which gave me full resonance with lightning and cold element. This is not the main trinity elemental resonance trigger but this is nice to have as an emergency option. Next support is increased critical strikes for 100% chance to crit, plain and boring. Then an interesting part, energy leech support. This is nice support either you are leeching or are on full energy shield. Build use Eldritch Battery Keystone for mana management and with energy leech support mana management is non-existent. Even in Baron mana is gone rectangles you can cast anything. 250 base energy shield is more than enough to cover mana management in 99% of the times. And for that extra 1% when you are have less recovery map mod or other weird interaction you can either craft prefix on body armor for percent of life as extra energy shield or craft energy shield regen when rare enemy is nearby for suffix on belt or body armor. And final support for the build is plain choice of increased area of effect for clear or consecrated effect when you go for arena boss fights. So we are still not fully done with Trinity support. Prematurely discharging sometimes feel nice, but build can do better. Trinity support proc only with skills that do elemental damage as main source. And elemental resonance that you are get are opposite of highest type of elemental damage. Highest type of damage on full 20 charge discharge in majority of times would be lightning. So with level 1 leap slam small physical damage and big edit call damage from high level ice bite support, build can reliably proc trinity support elemental resonance opposite of cold element for fire and lightning. With the leap slam 5 link movement utility build have reliable way to trigger trinity and fortify supports each time you hit an enemy. And as a classic path of exile builds, well just mark that faster attack support to move around maps with slip slam just faster, faster. Alright, build is using 4 golems thanks to Elemancer Ascendancy branch coupled with golem commander on passive tree. That include flame golem for extra damage buff, stone golem for life regen, ice golem for crit chance modifiers and finally chaos golem for really important physical damage mitigation. Only level 22 Chaos Golem grant you 5% over 4% physical damage mitigation on level 20 and 21. With all buffs from Ascendancy and 3 it results in extra 4% in the end. That is why I spent a bit of extra currency and got plus 2 minion levels on helmet for my Chaos Golem. Thanks to Eldritch Battery Keystone, build can reserve full mana pool with auras. Most important aura is Zealotry with critical strike and spell damage effects, coupled with nice consecrated ground when build hits rare enemy. Next stop is Flesh and Stone in Sandstance or Herald of Ice. Sandstance gives nice layer of defense for boss fights, while Herald of Ice push insane area of effect clear even further. I personally prefer more defenses since well my PC is a relic of more civilized age and build already have good like really good and godlike clear anyway. And final aura is of course vitality for that extra bit of life regen pushing total build regen to 1.4k life per second. And final touches of skill gems would be Assassin Mark Curse to have even more reliable power charge generation on arena single bosses. And of course, cast and damage taken 
on maximum level with Steel Skin Guard skill. Together with Bastion of Elements Ascendancy Node and Steel Skin, Bill get around 5k of extra flat hit points. Do not confuse that with effective HP. This Ascendancy and Guard skill choice makes mapping really comfortable and complement nature of the build, which would be like jump into the close quarters and discharge. Speaking of Ascendancy choices, this is where a build can be actually tuned to be more dedicated bosser than a universal all-rounder and strong mapper. By abandoning Bastion of Elements, build can get Heart of Destruction Ascendancy node. Then you can replace Second Wind support with Hypothermia or get different war stuff with blue color Control Destruction support. You would not need that extra cooldown recovery from Second Wind on single boss arenas anyway and 2 second discharge cooldown is just alright. By this two simple manipulation build can almost double single target DPS before any additional currency investments. With build variation explained, let's talk about passive tree. First build focus on critical strike chance to 100% cap discharge. Then build gets crit multi, life, some mana and elemental damage. Getting any charge node that build can reach is a must. In the east part of the tree build reach for two charges, dexterity and life. And here is where build get Eldritch Battery Keystone with only 2 extra points spent. In the west part of the tree it gets a bit more interesting. With large cluster jewel build can reach 4 extra life from small cluster jewel and not overstretch on passive tree. But most important is to get corrosive elements notable on large cluster jewel. This is the only way build get synergy with mastermind of discord ascendancy node and at the same time get exposure for each of 3 elements. After that, on Large Jewel you can get something like Dariani Touch for that extra life leech, but be prepared that good triple notable jewel will cost you up to 5 to 10 exalts. With Purity of Flash after Cluster Jewel build allocate quite a bit of Chaos Resistance. Then Rune Binder Keystone to get that fast power charge generation from dual attached Stormbrand on single boss arenas, and then 2 charges and Divine Judgment for extra elemental damage and even more damage with Holy Dominion, Light of Divinity and Retribution Notables. All that of course while roasting through life nodes. Everything said about Passive Tree is important, but Passive Tree allocate 5 socket slots for ordinary jewels. This is really really important for damage scaling. On showcase build I have cheaper 20c jewels. Really good jewels that give you several extra percent of total damage could easily cost several exalts each. First you need to hunt for dual mode critical strike multiplier for any element since well discharge tags do not care. After that just get any damage modifier alongside with maximum dexterity and some strength. It is really puzzling how increased area damage modifier costs nothing while global crit multi usually costs several exalts, even for bad rolls and same damage. Be aware that even low cost duels each is responsible for something like half of million shape DPS. And a bit better old ones, well, they will get your damage even higher. Do not skip them, do not skip jewels. If you are rolling in results, you also can buy 4 crit multi modifier jewels and fix your dexterity on other rare gear. If you are unsure about what jewels are the best, just copy ones that you are interested from trade website into path of building. That way you can start to understand what modifiers are really great for your personal gear combination. And speaking of gear, rare gear itself aside frenzy chest and one energy shield utility craft is pretty straightforward. Max out elemental resists, then get maximum possible chaos resists and after that search for flat life rolls that suit your budget. Or maybe just benchcraft them as I did. As high budget option always search for critical strike multi, spell damage and stun avoidance on the gear. Or be lazy as me and just run anti-stun pantheon. Real nice quality of life is to get cooldown recovery craft for discharge on belt or maybe more expensive natural roll on the boots. Flasks are plain and simple thanks to elemental element immunity from Elemancer node and 4 golems. Get panic life flask with immunity to bleeding, flask with curse immunity and poison immunity. And remember that you always can get those immunity suffixes from menagerie self craft. Next week I will be doing even more reworked elementalist builds, most likely it will be something like Ignite Outer Bomber or maybe something CI with Max Block, uh, Energy Shield, 
recovery on block with the one power siphon blah 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 blah, blah whatever <laughs> leave the comment down below what elementalist build you want to see next on the channel because well you guess what on the previous video Michael Summers requested elementalist abusing all the elements to explode content and guess what 20 charge power discharge elementalist is exactly what he requested it deal damage with three elements and explode everything so thank you for watching leave the comment down below and have a pleasant day some brand is really fast spell then crit second step is to have power charge conversion into endurance charges when i plus one power charge warlord in warlord this Что? Я хочу есть.